Now let's talk about our good friend, the solenoid valve. So this is two parts, the solenoid and a valve. And the idea is that it stops the flow of refrigerant. You'll typically see these on the liquid line, which is why we're talking about it now. But you see there's also an arrow on this. That arrow is very important because they have to be the running the correct direction. So it's two parts. It's an electromagnet and a solenoid. Here's our valve and here is our solenoid kit. So we take this kit, we open it up, and we see there's nothing more than an electromagnet. And we're gonna talk about electromagnets when we get into electrical, and this don't go together because there's not lined up, but this is essentially just an electromagnet. The electromagnet controls the valve, so it's an electromagnetic valve. So solenoid valve, solenoid valve, electromagnet valve. So let's take a quick little look at an example of how that would work. So let's take a quick example of how this would work. Now this is very crude, but here I have an electromagnet and here is a plunger that's gonna move up and down. And let's say there's a valve here. Right now the valve's closed, refrigerant cannot flow. If I energize the electromagnet, we see the valve opens and now refrigerant can flow. We de-energize the electromagnet and it falls back down and now refrigerant cannot flow. So it's an electromagnetic valve. Pretty cool. That's how it works in its simplest form, but there's a little bit more that goes into it. So let's open this up and see. So let's open this one up and see what we have going on. Oh, lots of moving parts here. So here we have a seal to where this one, when it closes down, some kind of material that helps seal these two pieces together so we don't lose refrigerant. Then we have this pin, and this pin is what's moving from the magnet. There's a little spring, and that spring is gonna be pushing down against this top side, help keeping it pushed down. The magnet overcomes the spring and pulls this lever up. So this is what's one of the parts that's moving inside of there. So if we drop this pin inside, we can see how the spring keeps it pushed up and down. That's what happens when we put a magnet on the back side of this. Here's a nice strong neodymium magnet. You can see it's pulled all the way inside. Now let's see if I can slowly separate the magnet. And you can see how it pulls up, and then it pulls down, and it pulls up. Now my magnet doesn't initially pull it down because you gotta think it's electromagnet going over this whole entire column. They make a really cool magnet. It's a tool for these. You can manually operate them. It's a circle magnet that goes around this that works really great. I didn't bring mine with me today, so we're having to improvise. All this thing does is this pin goes up and down. Now this has a little needle on the end. Let's look and see what this needle is pushing against. So here we can see we have our valve and our needle is pushing right here on this part of the valve. We have the spring that fits right on the end here. That keeps it pushed up against the top. And remember these springs are sensitive to temperature as well. So if we get too much heat from brazing, it'll damage the spring. So this piece keeps this next part pushed down. So let's take this part off. And now we can see the majority of our valve. Now this has an arrow on it. It's very important the direction it's flowing. It's flowing this direction. So refrigerant's going this way. So refrigerant's coming in to this larger chamber right here. And then from there, it has to go through this valve, through this seal, before it goes to the hole in the center that goes on to the other side. So as a few key points in this, we need to look at. All right, so here's one that's cut open. The refrigerant flows in to this direction, then now it's closed, it can't go anywhere, but also it's going through this little bitty orifice, this little pinhole here, that allows some of that high pressure to also keep this pushed down. So not only is it this little spring right here, that's help keeping it pushed down. It's also the pressure from the high side as well. Then we can do a pump down, we can pull back in, whatever we need over here, we can do the work, but it stops the flow of refrigerant. When we put our magnet on here, it's gonna pull this pin up. So this pin is gonna push up. Now see, it doesn't have to move very much, but it's just moving this rod, this piston. Next is the pressure. Since the high side has the majority of the pressure here, that pressure pushes this up the rest of the way. Now you can see it doesn't take much to make this open and close. Open and closed. Open and closed. So when it opens, it allows the refrigerant to go around this pipe and continue on where it needs to go. Let's put a little magnet on here 
and we can see if it'll pull this the rest of the way up. So right now the spring is pushing down on this piece, which is pushing down on this brass piece, which has our valve closed. I'm gonna move this valve up next to this neodymium magnet and you'll see it pull it closed. Now I'm not strong enough to control this. Once I get close enough, it's gonna pull in real hard. So it's gonna be hard to see, but hopefully we can see it with the camera. So now when it hit, it pulled this pin, it pulled this pin firmly to the very top. Now we have a gap here. See how there's play in this section here? So the refrigerant pressure will allow this to push up and allow the refrigerant to continue on where it's going. Now remember that had that little hole right here, this little orifice. So refrigerant, when an electromagnet is pulled up, a refrigerant is able to flow around through this hole and continue on. But when you release the electromagnet, this pin drops. When we release the electromagnet, the little spring right here pushes that pin down and causes everything to drop and we shut off. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. Let's take a little closer look at what's happening. If we think about how small this spring is, here's another spring. Look how small that spring is. It's a very small, lightweight, flimsy spring. That's really not able to overcome all of the pressure of the refrigerant pushing through here. So they did something quite fascinating. Here is an example of this piece. So this side faces down to where this gasket material here seals right here at these two points. And we see there's a little hole right here. Well, if we were to flip this over, we see on the other side, the hole in the center goes all the way through and there's two little holes here on the side. These holes are very important. So let's look at what's really happening. When our electromagnet is energized, everything is up and running. Well, let's talk about what happens when we de-energize the electromagnet. That electromagnet allows this pin right here to drop. And this pin has that little pointer on the front of it. So that pin pushes down right inside of that center hole. And all it essentially does, that spring pushes down and it blocks this very center hole. So no refrigerant at all can flow through that center hole. Now here is what gets so beautiful. So we've plugged that center hole. Now we still have the hole right here that's getting pressure on the incoming side. And the size of that hole is very important because it works as an orifice. What's happening is the refrigerant starts to push through that hole. And as the refrigerant, now you're talking about the high pressure side, the refrigerant is pushing through that hole. It allows it to come on this side of that plate. Well, as the refrigerant comes in this side of the plate, we end up with the, eventually the same pressure here as there is here. And the pressure of the refrigerant is what's actually pushing this pin back down. So the, the spring pushes this into the hole. But what's pushing this piece back down is the high pressure itself. And as more and more high pressure goes through or is metered through this small hole, we eventually end up with enough pressure to push this whole entire plate or the valve completely closed. Now the pressure on this side will equalize through this small hole to this side. So the pressure is keeping that force down. Now on the other side, we end up doing a pump down or whatever. There's going to be a pressure drop over here. It's not just going to be a closed valve. So we end up with all of our high pressure on this side and much lower pressure on the other side. The high pressure keeps that push down. So let's talk about what happens when we energize our electromagnet here. So when I energize the electromagnet, it's only pulling up on the metal. Remember this piece right here is brass. So it's only pulling up on this section. So when it pulls up on this section, we actually pull this pin out of that hole right there. Well, that's very important for us to know. As we pull this pin out of the hole, there's a little seal right here on the side, that little gasket material. What's happening is all the refrigerant, the high pressure on this side floods through that hole. So now as all the pressure on this side flooded through the hole, it's trying to come back into the small hole but look how small it holds. It's coming back at a very restricted rate, even smaller on this side. So as that refrigerant is draining out to the top side through this hole, so it's draining through here, we end up with a pressure difference. The pressure on this side becomes lower because it's bleeding through that hole right there in the center side over here to this side. So now as we have less pressure right here, the high side pressure is able to push this piece on up. In other words, this piece is now pushed up and out of the way. Now the refrigerant's going around this little curve and continuing on like it's not even there. So now the refrigerant is coming from here around to that center piece and carries on. Now when our solenoid is de-energized, our electromagnet is de-energized, this metal pin is pushed by the small spring back down and plugs that hole up. 
So as we plug that hole up, we end up with a pressure dropping on the side and the refrigerant is bleeding through this little pin right here. So we start increasing the pressure on this side. As we increase the pressure on this side, we get more and more pressure and it starts to push this piece down. And now we have that little seal right here the same seal that's here, it's blocking the flow of refrigerant. And as this pressure drops, we get more and more pressure on this side and it makes a nice tight seal. So we have two seals. We got the seal on this side of the pin that is right here. This particular model is Teflon. I don't know what this one is made of, but if we turn it over, we can see the other side has a seal material also. And that's where this comes into place. It blocks that hole. So I find the engineering behind this absolutely incredible. I think it's brilliant what some of the engineers do. Let's look at that a little bit farther. This model here has this little hole cut in that pin so that refrigerant doesn't get trapped right there. This model did it a little different. They cut a groove up and down and that groove ensures that refrigerant, the higher pressure doesn't get trapped over here. So we end up with smooth operation of this pin. So it's only affected by that magnet. So here we open it up in a few different directions. Here's our brand new valve section uh, without the solenoid on it. Here we have our solenoid electromagnet on top of our outer casing top of our spring and our pin, the valve piece itself with the pilot valve and our main valve here. So you can see it's also cut open. I got the magnet against it. And then from there, it's pulled into the pin. Pin is pulled the spring up. The pressure would then allow this to push up and then allow the refrigerant to continue to flow on. So the solenoid valve, it's very simple of how it works. Now let's talk about how we're going to apply the solenoid valve. 